Hello everyone, welcome to another video, it's Eric here. Um, we're back to Minecraft Archaeology and we're going to pick up on a few things. I know it's been a minute since I've worked on them. Uh, I've improved a few of my video editing. If it keeps zooming in and out, that's because my camera has autofocus and I haven't figured out how to change that yet. Um, so let's get into it. So a few things have changed since I last uploaded video 2. Um, I've added a few things, so I've labeled each of my test unit locations. I've just decided to label them simply because this is just an educational video. I'm not trying to be as rigorous as I would, in, would be in the field. Um, so we're just calling each of our random sampled sites R, so R1, R2, so on and so forth. Our stratified random ones we're calling ST. Uh, our systematic ones we're calling SY. And then the transects are just moving um, east to west so this would be transect 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. And then you'll also notice I mapped in a couple of things that I found uh, when I was making this map. Um, I added the shipwreck, shipwreck number 1, just going to start numbering them sequentially, and then ruins number 1 um, that I found in my last video. And I've also updated my spreadsheet, which I'm going to make a Google Doc version of this one that you guys will be able to uh, look at. I just haven't made it yet and figured out a way to share it that doesn't make it so that I have a million and five people possibly looking at this uh, spreadsheet uh, that I would share on my Google account. Um, but as you can see the columns I have in here is basically the name of the test unit and or the site. Um, so the shipwreck number one and rooms number one are mapped in here. And then the easting and northings in the coordinate system in the coordinate system of the Minecraft map that's being generated and then I threw in some extra stuff here just for reference I don't know if I would get more detailed I probably could if I wanted to describe like say all of the artifacts I just kinda put that in the comments a little bit here um, if it's uh, how many sites are at this location structures um, artifacts shipwrecks so you can see um, I haven't tallied up what's at the shipwreck site number one but I have gotten the artifacts from ruin site number one and if I wanted to look at those artifacts if we navigate back to Minecraft here if I wanted to look at those artifacts and actually I just realized eh, yeah we'll be good so I've organized my curation facility as well within the game. Um, <laughs> I've made sort of a home base on the datum here as you can see. That's uh, off towards uh, random test unit one. Uh, but I left the roof off because I'm in creative mode so I don't really care about rain or elements or anything right now. Um, but as we find things we're just gonna add them to the chests and then label them. So this is ruins one. If I open it up here here's all the artifacts that were found in ruins number one. Um, and then obviously we'll keep going from there, build up if we need to, and then I just put the bed in there because you know it doesn't really matter but I get annoyed with nighttime in Minecraft when I'm just trying to crank out the uh, excavations. So I'd sleep there if I need to. With that being said we are going to navigate to ruins, uh, well not we're going to go to ruins, we're going to navigate to our I guess R2. We're going to go to R2 site and excavate that one and see if there's anything there. I suspect there probably won't be anything there, but I'll see how many of these I can crank out. We might be at a time lapse video like the last one that speeds up all of this work, and then I'll recap at the end um, what we found, depending on how many I decide to do in this video.
this excavation unit did not yield any positive results, no buried treasure, no shipwrecks, nothing. Um, so this one will be relatively easy to document in our spreadsheet because all we'll have to do is this was this was test unit R3 so we'll go over to random 3 and we found no sites, no structures, no artifacts, no shipwrecks and then I'll copy in the famous spaceball phrase there in my comments and that's it for that test unit so we're gonna move on to another test unit here um, let's see if we can't get lucky we're gonna go for R5 fingers crossed R5 has something in it um, but you never know So this one also excavated and found nothing. Oh, I guess it's raining now that I'm out of the water. Uh, but I did stumble across this pit of lava um, that I mostly inundated with water. And it doesn't look like there's much else going on here. Could have been an abandoned cave or, or a mine shaft, but unfortunately it was not. That was R5. So we can add to R5, no sites, no structures, no artifacts, no shipwrecks. We ain't found. So that's where we're going to leave it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, I think in the future I won't do any t more time lapses. I'll just do the work um, in advance and then show you the results in the video. Uh, that way there's no time lapses in them. However, I do thoroughly enjoy um, finding new music on the YouTube audio library um, just because it's fun generic background music um, <laughs> but this is clearly going to take a lot of time to work through this project just like a real archaeological project would take some time excavating in arbitrary layers uh, making sure we're thorough and covering our ground obviously this map will change with ne each new iteration of the video 
uh, and hopefully we'll find some interesting things along the way and you'll get a sense for how this archaeological survey is going and the benefits and drawbacks of each one, which we'll talk about at the end of the series. If you enjoyed this video, please consider donating to the Tri-C Foundation, linked in the description below, uh, to support educational content just like this. And as always, 